Hey everybody, I'm Jason Creel and you're watching The Lawn Care Life. Today I'm going to talk to you about some fall tips for your lawn. I'm, I'm looking at a Bermuda grass lawn. I want to show you some things about it and talk to you about maybe what you should be doing as you approach fall and also show you brown spots in the yard and talk to you about what may be causing brown spots in your lawn. So let's get started. Okay, what we're looking at here is Bermuda grass and we are in uh, September. I want to talk to you about some things I see and I get asked questions a lot by my customers about their grass. And if you see this lawn, you can see that there's a lot of brown and then there's some green areas too. We're going to talk about your the lawn in the fall, particularly talking about you know Bermuda grass, but this probably would apply to some other grass types as well. One of the main things to realize is that the grass is undergoing changes as we approach fall. The grass is beginning to store up energy and get prepared for winter, and this grass will go totally dormant as we get into winter. Well, what happens is, and then people want to know, you know, how tall should I cut my grass? And again, I'm going to speak about Bermuda grass at the moment, but it, it really depends. I mean, people use it for, you can cut it extremely low or you can let it get, you know, several inches, four or five inches tall and it's fine like that as well. What happens is a lot of times you get into the summer and the grass has been fertilized, we get rain and it begins growing very fast. And to keep it at a shorter length, you need to mow it very frequently, you know, even every three or four days sometimes to be able to keep it low without turning it brown. What happens if you're only cutting your grass every two weeks or sometimes you know every even every 10 days or so, you're gonna have to gradually increase the height that you're mowing the lawn to be able to keep the color. I mean, the general rule of thumb is, as I've been taught, is, is you don't wanna take off more than a third of the grass blade because when you do so, then you are, you're, you're basically cutting the color out of. Now, it's not like you're gonna kill the grass. It's not, this grass here that's turned brown is not dead. But as you can see, it's definitely lost a lot of color. Now, a couple of factors here. This grass was fairly tall, and to keep the color in it, you're gonna to have to continue to mow it at that, a very tall height. If you, if you let it get tall and you decide to cut it down, then obviously you're gonna cut the color out of it. So if you wanna keep it short, you're gonna to have to mow it frequently. It's probably gonna need a little bit more water. Uh, if you're gonna leave it longer, it helps kind of shade the roots from the heat and you could probably get by with slightly less water. But again, as, as the grass, as we move into the fall, the grass is gonna naturally start losing its color anyway. It's probably not gonna be as green as it was during the, the very fast growing summer months, but it can still hold that green color for a while, but you gotta, you know, you gotta mow it high because if you, uh, when we get on into September, at least in my area, if you were to cut it low, you know, if you did that back in, in July, it's gonna have time to recover. If you cut it low now, it, it really may never recover that green color again until next year. It's not going to kill it. It's just, you know, it's just not growing at the same rate it was. So you're, it's going to be basically brown for the rest of the year. So that's basically on the mowing height. Like I said, you, and then some people prefer it long. Some people prefer it short. I like to keep mine short if possible. But again, you got to mow it very frequently. You got to keep it watered. If and if it's dry out and you don't have irrigation, that becomes a challenge. One thing I would recommend is if it begins to get dry, which it has in my area, then I would recommend letting it stay a little longer. It just help it uh, not need quite as much water to survive and to keep that green color. Now, what makes brown spots in the lawn? Well, you can see here, I think this is a good example. There's a number of things that that make things brown and i'm just going to share with you some of the things i've learned from my experience some of the things i've been taught i often still have to ask questions uh, when i see a brown spot in the lawn i have a, a, a mentor in the industry and he'll help me try to diagnose what causes it and one of the things he's taught me is you know just learn to ask good questions to the homeowner because a lot of times you can gain a lot of clues of what might have caused it and i think experience and just seeing things will also help. But there's a number of factors that can cause a, a yard to turn brown. I mean, one thing is, is fungus. Uh, another thing is drought. Another thing is, is mower damage. You could have herbicide damage, which is the one that, you know, me being in the weed control and fertilization industry is definitely a, a possibility that that can happen. That seems to be the one that the homeowner likes to throw at you sometimes but uh and, it, and it's a possibility obviously over spraying a herbicide can cause damage to the lawn 
Uh, it could be a leak of some sort. Well, you know, if you have a lawnmower that's leaking fuel or hydraulic uh, fuel, something like that, it's going to cause damage to the turf. So there's a lot of factors. But let me just go over some of them and why you can help diagnose what is causing it. Let me see if I can show you an example and talk to you about what I've been taught. I don't know if you can see here, but you, you do have right here, you've got some, some green left in the yard. And if you look right over here, it's it's brown what happened here in my opinion just looking at it is this grass for whatever reason it may be the yard just being slightly uneven this grass was just cut a little bit higher than this grass so it may be you know a little dip in the turf and so with this being cut just a little bit lower you can see it's obviously not dead there's green coming back from it but it basically cut the color off of this area while this um, was cut just a little bit higher and still has the color now again you could cut this bermuda low and keep it low and it would it would do fine but when it's gotten tall and then you cut it just a little bit lower in one area then it's going to take the color out of it. and you can see there's sort of linear stripes here which is one of the best clues that it was probably done by a lawnmower as i've been taught you know a a pest and fungus things like that they don't work in in straight lines so when you start seeing linear lines let me show you if you can see this i don't know if you can see but you see where my fingers pointing right here that there's a straight line there you know to the right side of my finger it looks more brown to the left side it looks green and that's done by the lawnmower again the same situation where it's cut just a little bit lower on one side and it's turned brown it's, it's kept just a little bit longer on the left side and it still maintained its color now one way i use this to my advantage when i'm mowing a bermuda lawn what i like to do is on the final cut of the year now whenever that is for us it might be late october early november something like that i want to cut it low and just Put it out of its misery i mean not really i'm not trying to damage the grass but what i'm saying is i want to get rid of the green i want to uh, get rid of some of that grass that's going to go dormant it's going to be there the next spring that i'm gonna have to try to get rid of all that dormant grass anyway so i just cut it low and i'm saying i'm done cutting this yard for this year and and don't don't grow anymore and i'm not worried about that i took the color out of that time i'm not, I'm not wanting color i don't want to cut the lawn anymore so that's what i do Again, I do that on the last cut of the year. I wouldn't do that in September um, because you, you just stunt the grass so bad. It's going to look bad. It's going to come back with some green patches and some brown patches and things like that. This yard here, I know in, in our area, we've just been extremely dry. So, I mean, the, the weather plays a big part in it. Perhaps you could have cut it at this same level where it has some brown spots now and some green spots in other areas. If, you would have, if it would have had plenty of rain, maybe the whole yard would have been green. But again, the drought, the grass begins changing and the grass gets longer and stringier, kind of reaching upward for sunlight. And at that point, you got to continue to cut it higher and higher to maintain the color. In our area, I know it gets hot and dry a lot of times in the fall, and a drought can play a main factor in why a yard turns brown. Sometimes I'll go out to the yard and it's turned very much brown. It's not dead, but it's really struggling. And I, this is a line that I get a lot of times from homeowners. And I don't know if they all, you know, how where they come up with it, but it's somewhat of a defense mechanism. They'll say, "I've been watering this yard like crazy, and look at it. it's brown. Why is it brown? It's been getting plenty of water." And what they forget to tell you is, here, here's what I think would be a more accurate way to say that oftentimes is, I've been watering this lawn like crazy since this morning. You know, they, what happens is they start watering like crazy after it turns brown. You know, it's, oh, it's brown, let's get the sprinklers out. Water, water, water. Well, I mean, that's, that's, that's good. I mean, you want to, you know, you don't want to just not water it. But sometimes they wait until too late. And so when I hear... Uh, we had a severe drought two or three years ago and i and i got that line sometimes you know i've been my water bill was this many hundreds of dollars or i've been water you know it's like what well, yeah i'm sure you did once it was brown so anyway you know when conditions or weather conditions obviously play a factor one way you can oftentimes tell if it's more drought stress if you have an area in your yard where it just has real compacted soil or, or you got an area where it just has you know very shallow 
topsoil or it's real real hard and things like that you'll see that that area dries out first we i remember a particular yard i dealt with and it it had an underground cement drain or something like that where it only had a very little topsoil before you had the sod well it was almost like you could draw a straight line in that area where that area turned brown and some of it actually died and the rest of the yard had much more uh, topsoil that survived an extreme drought that we had a few years back of course there's many types of fungus and pests and things like that they can also cause damage to your turf and uh, each of those again needs need to ask a lot of questions kind of do some diagnostic research to figure out uh, what's causing it and as you get more experience you you begin to recognize some very common symptoms that can help you identify what's going on and what's causing the lawn to have problems oftentimes too you can see when the grass when it gets hot and dry you can see sometimes an area that's uh, more shaded will still be green in the area that's just in full sun will dry out faster and it'll start to turn brown or you got an area that may be in a little low dip area where the water kind of settles and that area may maintain its color better where if something's you know more on the top of a little hill then that's going to dry out faster because the water doesn't settle in that area Appreciate you watching the video. If you hadn't done so, I'd encourage you to subscribe to the channel. You can also click on Lawn Care Life below. That's the channel name, and that will take you to all the videos on the channel. There's over 500 videos. Also, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Appreciate you watching. Talk to you later. Bye.